season, like it's, it's hockey or nothing. Right. And, um, obviously no one knew at that time how big it was going to be. Well, I didn't at least, and you think it shut down for a little bit and kind of resume. And then once you see, I think after that weekend, that following week is whenever you went started kind of closing up with restaurants and whatnot. And it yeah. kind of yeah. became really a reality for what yeah. was going on in the world. Well, I think yeah. like you were hearing about the cases in China and like late mid to late January and, and uh, over like in the, in the States, North America, we're kind of like, ah, oh, it's, world's away it's not, never gonna affect us and then yeah uh february it, it started creeping into europe and we i mean we're still so like pumps it we were in the middle of the hockey season we're not really thinking of anything else but um as soon, when it started getting over into north america and then when it hit one of the major sports leagues i think that was the real shock to the system i never would have expected it to to kind of blow up as much as it's done so far um but hopefully we can you know get back to some kind of normal soon yeah, you know, and ultimately that's that's what we can hope for. But uh, it, it it seems just to like be grinding on, and I and I think the the quicker we all wrap our minds around that that ridiculous grind and focus on what we can control, and 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 in your cases, Matt and Joe, it's staying in shape, right? Now, what is the what is what is the parent club? What are the Griffins saying to you guys to do in the meantime? Joe, what have you been doing? I've been uh, <laughs> I've been working out. I have been. I've been going. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, Berta, there. You don't know what they're doing. My trainer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've actually been working out. Uh, my trainer <laughs> closed down his his gym and moved into his garage. I was fortunate enough that I could you know, at least get some kind of workout with weights. Um, and and days that I you know, wasn't really feeling it being so early in the summer or, or not really knowing what was going on. Uh, either take the dog for a run or just go for a run on my own, but just trying to keep busy. I've been playing a lot of golf courses have, uh, have been open since mid March here. So uh, those were never really shut down and BC's done a, a very good job of um, flattening the curve as they say. And um, just fortunate enough that, uh, you know, you can go golfing. So I guess keep busy. Man, how about you? Yeah, I think it's kind of similar. I think nothing, um, you know, nothing really replicates being on the ice or you can't really translate to being on the ice. So anytime you, we've been off now for, you know, two months, almost exactly to the day, it's uh, definitely, you know, you, you don't really know what to do, but you, you just try to stay uh, active as much as you can. And um, here there's, there's nothing really open. So mostly everything's just kind of, uh, you know, being uh, an everyday person activity wise, which has kind of been enjoyable, but uh I think hopefully as, as the weeks go on here, things are going to start opening up and um, obviously our, our gyms aren't the most public gym. So those things will probably start, um, you know, turning on soon. And, and uh, the same thing as Joe kind of being outside, but actually it was uh, snowing pretty good here last week. So <laughs> it was, uh, it, it wasn't anything outside that day. People were scraping their cars off. And, um, but that, that was, I've never really been home in May too much, but that was uh, a first for me definitely down here. Do you, do you I saw in the national like the, news. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Go ahead. Well, I've been seeing on like the the national news broadcast that Toronto and them were getting stole last week. Yeah. So yeah. it's been you know nice uh, like low twenties Celsius here. What's that? Uh, Mid seventies out there. They're down down the state. So it's been a really nice weather. Um. Uh, um. So Mike, uh, Mike, you and I, uh, I, I, I think we, um, I think we uh, have have thought about this, about what the arena setting will be like. I mean, the the players have have that to to focus on staying healthy, and and then there's, and I'll talk more about that in a second. But in the arena, ho- Mike, what do you think could possibly be happening when fans go to hockey games or any sporting event? I think I think the the season ticket holders will be spread out. And then the remaining tickets available, however they decide to social distance everybody in the arena, I think that will be, those will go for sale. But other than that, I, I don't think I'll get my same seats. I think it'll probably go by seniority of who's been season ticket holder the longest. And I think it'll just be spread out. If they even start, you know, cause they're going to start to open up, uh, you know, the country. And if we don't have a relapse, if we if we start to go in another direction, that could be a problem. So as of right now, I think we'll we'll yep. be just spread out. Yep. 
I, I, yeah, I, I never, I never thought about that with the season ticket holders. That's a good way to look at it. Like kind of, uh, they're probably the most loyal fans and, and they, they've been the ones supporting the team for so long that it would be good to kind of be able to have them in there. And then, and like you said, the ones that are extra kind of go, go around. But, um, you know, I think probably, uh, hopefully, uh, once the vaccine comes that they always keep talking about here, um, who knows when that is or, or when that'll be, yeah. that'll be let's get everyone back in there. It's not, it's not the next, in the next season for sure. Yeah, that's a, that's be, it'd be weird too. Looking up in the, uh, I mean, for Zayner, you're down at ice level. I mean, pumps. Looking up in the stands and, you know, seeing it maybe a quarter full in certain right. sections. Just, you know, it's going to be every third, fourth seat and every second or third row at least. Um, you know, to comply with those social distancing measures. So, it's definitely going to be a big change. I think once you know hockey starts up again. And it's just remarkable to think that where we were and where we are now and what we can foresee, because I, I'm not here in Michigan, the natives are getting restless and, you know, they can't stay shut forever, though I'm massively in support of safety. But when they do start to bring it back, it's going to be knowing that you can still get this virus. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be sooner rather than later that they start to open this thing up. And then, you know, the idea is just as long as we don't have a huge spike, they can handle that. And I mean, because at the end of the day, this doesn't kill most people, you know, but I, I, I'm wondering if the hockey team, what I'm afraid of is any sports team, just one guy getting sick, the whole team can't play, you know? Yeah, and I think that's exactly what happened with, you know, the NBA. I think professional sports might have got another week or two out of out of the season if that didn't happen and cause uh, kind of that chain reaction in sports leagues. But uh, at the same time, you got to make sure everyone's safe too. And and I think uh, that's going to be the biggest factor in, in whether, you know, professional sports leagues start up again and, and when they when they do start up. Yes. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard pretty You're good rumors that it's going to be later. I'm sorry, say that again, Matt. I heard pretty good. Like, I think it's going to be a little bit later of a season startup time is what they're probably ideally going to try to do. Um, yeah. You know, and yeah, then, more towards November, December or something like that. Yeah. And then, and now has the team been in contact uh, about the potential for the schedule in terms of, cause I know there's uh, numerous things that they might have you cause what training camp is September. Is that when September, is it September? Yeah, October? usually Mid September it starts up. That's only four months away. That's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. I can't, I can't imagine it because you basically were looking at, you know, another month before we start thinking about even, you know, opening up at a more uh, broader level. And I, 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 I can't even imagine uh, what's going through your minds. The unknown, is it causing you stress? I mean, how, how are you doing? Um, yeah, I, I think doing, uh, I'm doing pretty good. I think my biggest thing is here when I come home here, I'm uh, with my parents. So I got to be a little extra cautious with them. Uh, I'm not personally as, uh, probably impacted by the disease as the older people, like you said, kind of are. Um, but, uh, I was just out doing some errands and, um, now they have like at the liquor store, they have all the, the plexiglass up. So the liquor you, were, store, hey. you were at the liquor store, eh? <laughs> I was picking up, I was picking up for uh, some people, some family members, pick up some, uh, some yeah. drinks. So, yeah, um, I, I yeah, it's some family members. Yeah. Is it, was the was there a shortage of beer at one time back in March because recyclables? You guys re must recycle bottles for beer, and they were having a bottle shortage. I, I didn't I hear about that personally, that. yeah, but I, I know that they, I think they're still not taking empties back, if that's correct. I know in, in, in my little town here, they do empties only on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, because they okay. this town is definitely a uh, farm, <laughs> farming community, and they, they would need the bottles or else it would be a problem. In Canada, is there, is there uh, in, in Essex or Kamloops, are you getting, because here in Michigan, it's, I mean, you get these kooks that are going to the Capitol and saying, you know, they're, I don't, I'm sure you've seen the stories. They're losing their minds. Uh, what is it like in Canada? Are the people uh, getting restless like they are here in Michigan? I'll answer. I think Joe might have froze there, so I'll, uh, I'll take over there. But uh, I, I, I get, oh, there you are you back? You're back? back? Okay. I'm back. 
I'm uh, back. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, we got you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez, I froze. Go ahead, Matt. You go. Oh, no, I was just saying, I get a lot of the Detroit news, so I saw there they were uh, had the guns waving and whatnot. But um, in where I am, there's not much of that going on. I think people are getting restless no matter what way, which way you cut it, but they're not, uh, they're not as um, kind of, I guess, uh, you know, they're not as uh, – out in the public doing uh, making signs or waving <laughs> you guns. Are waving guns. <laughs> you are so polite. Canadians yeah. must think that we are crazy, man. You must think we're nuts. Well, I saw a guy in the news the other day. He, he had his gun in his hand and he was getting interviewed and he said that the whole thing wasn't true. The whole There's no coronavirus. And I I don't know how you could possibly <laughs> think that, but I mean, that's uh, to each their own, I guess, at that point. I hate them. I hate them so much. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they ruin everything. These are the people you don't want at parties. You see them coming, you're like, you know. Yeah, but do, you, do you think you think that's really as bad as as what they're saying it is, or is it just the media attention that is being given to these folks? Um, Am I back? The, yep, yep, you're back. You're back. back yeah. Okay. Um, Take it. Well, I think it is, is like bad as I mean, obviously the media kind of makes it worse, but. Um, there's been protesters in BC uh, wanting to reopen restaurants and, and we're starting to move in that direction. I think, um, you know, after a long weekend here, uh, we're going to start opening restaurants at limited capacity and uh, that's going to please people to a certain degree. Uh, to the gun thing, our prime minister took a bunch of guns away from people. So that's been the I actual saw, protest. I saw <laughs> that. The, the oh my minister. God. Yeah. You guys had a bad one. It was a bad mass shooting. And then he said, everybody give me your guns, which is remarkable that he could even pull that off that was uh it was it was quite a thing well i read something yeah. in one of the national newspapers that three of the four guns used were actually from the u.s so that's where all the uh the gun owners in, in canada is like why are you taking our guns we're, all, we're obviously not the ones using them in in, in these mass killings and, and shooting sprees it's yeah. kind of the crazies do you guys do you guys see a lot of businesses not coming back like uh mom and pop restaurants that they're not going to be able to afford to have social distancing in their restaurants. Oh yeah. Like I, I feel bad for those people, obviously. Um, like I was thinking us playing hockey, um, you know, it didn't really, at the end of the day, it didn't really change our season um, or our, you know, financial status. We, we still got three quarters of the season in essentially. So I see some people who just, uh, you know, that, that the unemployment rate, especially in the States is so high and, uh, these businesses that, um, and especially in my town, like they're so, uh, although rent's cheaper, but you still are paying rent and still, you know, based on the income, you, you need that income to stay afloat. And um, yeah, I, I do think it's going to be, unfortunately, hit pretty good, um, depending, I guess, all on when things get open. I know Joe said they're going to start opening, which is good there, but I, in Ontario, I don't think restaurants will be open, um, you know, where you can sell alcohol and make up your money that way um, for a little while still, I think. Today was the first yeah. day actually where they, they opened things, anything up in Ontario. So I think, um, you know, you're going to see a lot of, you know, the mom and, and pop restaurants. Um, you're trying to just stay alive in these next couple of months, BC. Um, we were, we kind of opened up um, the laws on, on selling liquor and, and the off sale. So uh, restaurants were able to do takeout and sell uh, like bottles of wine and stuff. And, uh, people in my hometown in Calus were actually really good about, uh, like my, me and my family tried to uh, order from a local restaurant at least once a week um, and try and support those people that, you know, give so much to the community, whether it's uh, kids camps, supporting local hockey teams, uh, soccer camps, all that type of thing. Uh, you're going to see a lot of that funding, I think, dry up in the next couple of years. Yeah. Okay, guys. Now, as the season went on, it seems like um... – right about when it hit the fan, you guys were kind of really starting to hit your stride. You had got, if I remember correctly, you had points in a whole bunch of games and, and you guys were really starting to uh, uh, gel as a team. I know that's cliche, but it, it seemed like things were really starting to happen for you guys. Um, can you take me to like high points of the season for you that, that made you believe that, Hey, I think we got a shot with this team. I think after the All-Star break, um, I think we might have lost the first two or three games out of there, but uh, we had a week in Chicago uh, uh, where we played Chicago a couple times, Rockford a couple times, 
Uh, we stayed out in Illinois, and I think it was just good team bonding there. Uh, we were able to, uh, you know, grab a couple beers with the guys and, and just, you know, tell some jokes, get some laughs and stories. And, and I think that's really kind of what set it off. And then from that point on, I think it's when we started uh, rolling out those, those, that point streak that you alluded to. Matt, uh, how, how did you feel as the season was going on after the All-Star game? Yeah, I think definitely, um, you know, after the All-Star break, probably into, uh, you know, February and March, especially when the season stopped. Uh, I know we beat Iowa that night and uh, the previous game we beat Rockford, which were obviously big. Uh, you know, we were still battling with those teams for playoff spots. But, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, we would have probably made it in just by um, on paper who we were lined up against. But um, and it's easier to say that now, too, as the season ended and you're not going to ever find out who made it in. But uh, you can just say it was a great year. Yeah. You're going to win the championship. Too bad, as I think a lot of teams are, uh, especially in the NHL, I think they all think now, coming back, that the best teams, um, you know, it's not about really who is the best team now. It's about just kind of who can win a few games in a short period of time. Sure, sure. And that's why yeah. like the Stanley Cup might have, you know, it's, it's obviously a great trophy to win, but it might be just feel a little bit different this year if they were able to do that. Well, last, last well, yeah. season it was a nail biter because uh, we had to bank on Chicago to lose in that last game for you guys to get in. To the, to the I think we were, we were watching the game on the bus on the way home. I think it was Milwaukee, if, if my memory serves me right. Yeah. yeah, losing the last 12 in a row probably wasn't in our favor. Yeah. <laughs> Do either, do either of you guys uh, know uh, NHL journeyman Brandon uh, Lepsick? Is that how you say his well, name? How did I know? You, how did I know you were bringing this? Like you just want to stir the pot. I know it, and well, I don't mind it at all. I don't mind it. At no, all. the thing is, Lepsick. If people don't know, he was in a private conversation. Uh, Joe froze up again. He'll, he'll come back. I think he can hear, but he, he just can't okay. talk probably. Right, there he's back. Good. He, so, he ran to the fridge I, I and back. Can hear. He ran to the fridge. Hear. Mike, I don't know if you know Lepsick. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's, had a, he's been up and down, but whatever. And he's in a private conversation, and he's saying nasty things about people. doesn't matter what. But somehow somebody rats the guy out and, like, makes it public. And the whole world like blew up on this guy. Uh, what what are your thoughts on this gentleman? Is should this apply? Uh, because this is going to haunt him at least for the time being, uh, in being able to stay employed. What do you think, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I well, you know I what? It's, it's no, I, 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 yeah, it's something ahead, that yeah. now, now that I, it's out. It, it, you know, you feel bad for him, you know, thinking it was uh, a private conversation. But at the same time, uh, you never – I'm out, hey? Yeah, I can, I can hear you. It's just, there? It's just, it's just, yeah. yeah, yeah, we're here. It's just little, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you're, you're back now. You're back now. Go ahead, pump. Yeah. <laughs> I lost the train of thought. Yeah. Um, no, I think I, I think it's obviously, uh, um, you know, there's situations where all around people are kind of harmed and, um, you know, there's, there's not really many positives you can take from it other than, um, you know, people from the outside. It's, it's obviously a learning um, experience where, you know, you just know that, that the internet, when you're clicking those buttons on the phone, uh, I mean, there's days where I'm talking to my buddies about a restaurant and all of a sudden that night I'm getting ads for that restaurant when I don't even put it in the phone. That's how yeah. LinkedIn everything is nowadays. So, um, you know, it's, it's obviously something to learn from, from an outside standpoint, it, it's unfortunate. And, um, I think a lot of people were probably hurt in, yeah. in the long run, which isn't, oh. uh, isn't fun. And I, I don't think intentionally was, was his means. I'm not defending or backing up or anything, but I, I obviously yeah. he didn't think that was going to get out there. And, um, and another unfortunate part is there's not much going on in the world other than the coronavirus. So this story, everyone uh, and their sisters kind of seeing it, right? And it's kind of blowing up really big. And and you know, yeah, that's that's kind of yeah. What, what though, was it? Or should I just Google? Uh, it? Yeah, yeah, I guess Google. It was terrible. But he was he was dogging yeah. people, but no big deal. You know, to me, if I run a hockey team, let's say I'm the boss of whatever team, and I have a guy that does that. I said, well, well, did you say it publicly? No, I said it privately and somebody ratted me out. I said, well, go back to work. I don't care. That's the way I would handle it because 
frankly, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you are more, I mean, come on. I mean, it's, it's uh, people talk a certain way when they, when they don't, when it's just one-on-one. So I, I thought the whole thing was, was garbage, uh, frankly, and, and, and not fair to, I don't care what he said. Uh, I mean, if, if it's, yeah. if it's private like that, it's private. I mean, if people really knew what I say, to, <laughs> I mean, seriously, I, I say nasty stuff all the damn time. And I, and a lot of it is public, but at the same time, it's not. And if what I don't want public, I guard myself. So what it does for you, poor guys is now you can't even text your friends without uh, thinking, Oh God, I said the F word. Right. Oh no, I got to get, yeah. get called on the carpet. Oh God. I think a big thing is, I, I think it is um, big in a sense of uh, everyone has kind of probably, if you make everyone's public conversations public in the world, there's going to be conversations that you don't want out yes. there. Yeah. That's, that's everyone's going to have them. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it's, it's easy. It's easy for people to cut people up when uh, their individual situation is not public. Yeah. But at the same time, obviously um, it, it happened and then hopefully everyone from it learns from it and people that weren't involved learn from it type yeah. of thing. You know, everybody, yeah, yeah. everybody thinks they're a comedian. Like, if I want to make somebody laugh, I'm going to say something uh, really off the wall. Like, if I saw, I know someone really well, I'm going to say, I'll, I'll say something that's like, oh, God, if I said that in public, even doing a podcast where I don't answer to anybody, I still wouldn't have said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like the same thing where you actually want to think about it. Like, if you go to a, a comedian and see a comedian, and yeah. sometimes their jokes are a little off the wall, if they said that in the grocery store, it probably wouldn't fly as much as it would fly when they're on stage with a mic. So exactly, you know, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I want to go back in time. It was uh, 2017. Called it was was 2017 when you won the Calder Cup, right? Was it 2017 or 20, 2018? Uh, 2017. Okay, that's that was, and uh, we ended up after the game the next day. Matt, you weren't here, right? You no. weren't here. Okay, so but Joe was. And <laughs> I, I don't know where you're going with this. <laughs> okay. After the game, we, we all, everybody goes home. You probably go out with the, with the boys and do your thing. The next day is at coach Nelson's house. Everybody's going to sit by the pool and have fun. The trophy shows up and the bowl is like that. And yeah, it's, it's crooked. <laughs> and it, it's, it's crooked. It's, I, I took some pictures of it, and I went, oh, my gosh, this thing got destroyed last night. And that was a mistake because a minute later, the, the team calls me because the league saw it, and they called the team, and they called me and said, take it down, take it down. <laughs> Can you shed any light? Because from this point forward, rules have changed because a new yeah. cup had to be made from scratch. A new cup was made. Um, it actually, it happened, I want to say an hour after we, we got it. So we, we stayed on the ice, we prayed around, we took the pictures, we had our time on the ice. But when we started moving back into the, the dressing room, uh, you know, there's beer, champagne, cigars. You know, we looked like uh, the 90s Bulls at that point in the room. Uh, I don't know if you guys are watching last night. Joe was MJ. Um, we Joe was saying time. he was MJ. Joe was saying he was MJ. <laughs> no, I wasn't. <laughs> that was Svech, Svech the cop. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, but anyways. So, you know, there's people coming in. We had family members coming in the room and stuff. And at, at a certain point, it was like, anyone know who that is? Anyone know who that is? And we're like, who's, who's stopping at people? Like, is there security at the door? Yeah. So I, someone, it wasn't me, but someone like, someone looked out, like, went out, like, any security? They're like, there's no security. And at that point, it was like everyone at the same time turned around and there was these security guards holding the cup and someone like pushed it out of their hands and it fell down like on, oh, on yeah. the bowl yeah. in, the middle of the, in the middle of the dressing room. And it was, like, ooh, that's not good. But at that point of the night, it was just like, whatever, we won. <laughs> oh, my and God. I think over the course of the next week, <laughs> it, it started going like this. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting worse as time passed. Every uh, hour it got worse. And then by the time it got to me in July, it was Oh yeah. It, it wasn't looked, even recognizable. Yeah. It looked it looked like a pie tin. It was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then now, let's say uh, you know, whatever team wins, there's a there's like a 
a, 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 a note that goes with yeah. it that says, don't wreck the cup. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think Toronto won it the, the next year. And Brian Lash, I've had a buddy, I think it was Lash, um, you know, had a buddy text him a picture of the laminated piece of paper, whatever that was in there, saying uh, this cup was just replaced due to previous year's damage. Uh, if you do it, it's going to be a fine of however much for the team, and you're going to be your party's personally going to be fined this much oh, yeah. too. Uh, please take care of it. Type take thing. care so, of the Calder Cup, the new cup, and the I guess the first one. I don't know if they put it like in a museum, but uh, if you can, I don't know. See the old one, but if you ever can, if there's ever in the Hockey Hall of Fame, the first cup. You can see the damage inflicted from this. Mold. I I think they tried fixing it. I think they did try fixing it. it was just maybe <laughs> unfixable oh, at that point. Oh, it was so bad. But I good, imagine. Hey, good times. It was good oh, times. Oh yeah, the, the story can be told now. All right, now now guys, one of my favorite thing uh, is uh, doing the games, and when there is a uh, a delay of some type, maybe usually behind the uh, uh, in the D zone net maybe they scraped a little too much or they are there's water down and they have to repair the ice to some degree. And there's always, see, you guys are always on the ice at the same time. It seems like the face off, especially at the start. Yeah. Of we the don't game. ever, we don't ever want to go off. We don't have, yeah. <laughs> well, Joe Hicketts, I, I asked we your grandmother, <laughs> grandma, I was talking to your grandma. She said that you're very, you were very nosy and interested in everything when you were growing up. And it, you always seem to skate around where the ice is damaged. And that allows me to say, Oh yeah, there's supervisor Joe Hicketts. I, <laughs> I supervise everything. <laughs> he does. Like, like he does. My, my brother built my mom a strawberry box for uh, mother's day. I said I'd help. I uh -huh. supervised the project. I Good. supervised it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. so the tomato box I supervise. You're 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 a really good supervisor, and uh, yeah, and 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 I love the glances because I'll get glances from you guys because you because <laughs> you know it's coming every time. You know it's coming. I got a quick question. Right. Yeah, do it. So I think Joe, you you're good through next season your contract, but Matt, yours is up pretty quick. Yeah. When when do you start talks on that? Have they started? Um. Um, yeah, I think, I think obviously this year, I think I would know more if it was a normal year. Um, but right now I haven't heard anything, um, going towards next year. Um, I know it's going to look different in a sense of, uh, we had different vet players that are classified as veteran players. So, um, obviously all aren't going to be back because there was a vet problem this year. So, uh, yeah, I haven't heard much. I know normally a free agency would start July 1st, but going to be a little bit different this year uh depending on if they resume the season though could be september october 1st even um but yeah i definitely enjoyed my time in in the organization so uh if they want to uh bring me back i'd be willing to come back but uh i haven't heard much on, on yeah. either way really yeah they kind of just said we're not not interested and right now we're not interested in kind of dealing with players where they until they know their kind of situation what's going to happen mm -hmm. what when do you uh when would you get nervous? I mean, what, what date passes and you're like, I haven't heard anything. <laughs> well, yeah, I haven't heard much now. So that might be telling you that. But I, I don't know. Like I, I, being, a, being a realist, I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, we're working something out because I haven't even, you know, even touched a pen or anything like that to, to make that official. But, um, yeah, I, I honestly don't. This is the first time for me I would ever be um, not restricted by a team. So, um, normally I would already know by the exit meeting or whatnot, they would tell me if I was coming back, but since everything was kind of different this year and even in the exit meetings we had were, um, all virtual, um, it was like kind of, yeah, we want to bring you back, but we don't know what's going to happen. So I'm sure they told that to 30 guys, right? Yeah, like, yeah pretty like, much. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone loves I was everyone. already back. <laughs> when it's face to, yeah. When it's face yeah. to face, everyone loves everyone and everyone had a great year, but you got to just see how things go. And, and it's, it's a business too, at the end of the day. Yeah, I can totally see that. And uh, it's almost like if I run the team, I'm like, well, how do, where do I even begin? I don't even know if there's going to be a season. It's, it seems like, have you ever considered the fact that there might, you might have to wait another year? I mean, has that crossed your mind at all? I've thought about it. I just don't want to believe it. It's, yeah. uh, it's, sc it's a scary thought, like. Yeah. yeah, like I think once I, I think once uh I mean, yeah, no one really knows what's going on in the world right now, but 
even just like a, I, I've never watched NFL draft in my life. And I watched the fourth round of NFL draft virtually on TV. So that's everyone with sports now, I think it's just coming out. The UFC was big the other night. And like, I think people, um, I, I think it's just going to be a later start. I think there is going to be a season. Okay. Um, I think the NHL will never not let a lockout season pass when they just want the money. Everyone wants money at the end of the day. And when you want to figure out how business works, find where the money goes. So that's kind of what happens. And I don't think the AHL, like you're not going to have an AHL without an AHL realistically, yeah. because uh, you, everyone's got the next best prospect in their system and they want them to play. So we'll see, I guess, I don't know, but like, I know AHL is different in the revenue side of things. So that's obviously something to take into, but I think it'll just be a later start personally, but I'm just being optimistic because I, I don't want to think of not playing yep, at all. For sure. Yeah. For sure. I think there'll be a question of whether you play in, in front of fans or not at the beginning. Right. Yeah. That's depending on when we start and, and what the world got at that point, for sure. That's, that's yeah. I think even the, even the football, like, I don't know how they, they released a schedule in September. You got to assume they're going to be pushed back at some point. Right. Or, or kind of no fans in September, at least. Right. Like, I don't know. I, that's what I think. But. No. Well, I mean, tra and training camps, July. I mean, we're in May. If this is, this is just for crazy. NFL? Training camps start in July. Yeah. And there. Yeah. Is. So Florida is yeah. open for business for the, you know, they open their stadiums up. There we go. I think did Arizona do that too, or no? I, yeah, I they did. Thought it, yeah. 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 So, so that'd be weird to have like a, uh, some, some States, you know, kind of Arizona on, uh, did too. Arizona did too. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. I tell you that stuff Joe has out in Kamloops. It's just better than everyone else's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fit. The, the, Joey, uh, I, I see. I see you got the Canadian flag behind you. Americans call the flag "Old Glory." I do. Is there another? Is Arizona's there open. Arizona's open too. I think. Did you know that Arizona's open? <laughs> I did. <laughs> is there another name for the Canadian flag? No. Because you know the U.S. So. We we it's a nickname, "Old Glory." Do you have a nickname for your flag? Like I don't know, red maple. I didn't even know I, that. I didn't know that was a nickname for the United States. I didn't flag. either. Yep, 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 yep. So, I don't want to end there. Mike, you got anything else for uh, for, for these boys before I wrap them? I, I think we're good. Yeah, I tell you what, it's, uh, it's, it's great to see your faces. You look healthy. You look happy. I'm sorry you didn't finish up the hockey season. If you had made a run, we'd still be playing hockey. Yeah, because it, yeah. goes, it goes into yeah. June, the Calder Cup. Yeah, we would have been uh, – yeah, we would have won. We would have won for sure. Oh my God! Yes, this would have been yet another. another uh, uh, Mike, 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 where are you come. at? Where you're up a little bit. You're about. You're you're not far from Bitely, right? Right. I'm by yeah. uh, um, the Bitely Bar where you were hanging out. Yeah, <laughs> I took out. I, I did take out. I did take out about about a month ago from Woody's. Oh, did you really? Yeah, yeah. Well, you hang yeah. out up here, don't you? I'm, uh, I'm about, yeah, I've been. I was about there eight twice. miles. Eight, yeah. eight miles from there. Oh, yeah, we he sticks out the signs that say bar. We we have two case two cases all across the state. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you guys are pretty well. Uh, I mean, I don't think there's been a case in my town, but it's a it's a bunch of little towns. But I think you guys are you guys probably haven't changed much, right? You guys are probably still staying the the course of everyday life type of thing. Yeah. As soon as they lifted the travel the travel ban, they had a travel ban in Michigan where you couldn't travel back and forth between two. Right. Residents. Once they lifted that. Um, people were tripping. It's it's like nothing's going on. Which I yeah. never really I understood, but I didn't understand that. Uh, some things I, I mean, I'm not a politician at all, and I I don't really want to be when I see these guys on TV. <laughs> but some things they they believe should be open and shouldn't be open. I don't know how they figure out what's going to be the next thing. Like a tattoo parlor to me is not something that needs to be open right now. But you know, I guess if, if you want to get something done, and I think the idea behind the travel ban was. If you go to some of these communities like uh, way up north, the hospital there can treat like a sunburn, and that's about it. So if these people come up uh, from Detroit okay. Okay. and they go to the parks, and that's there's a there's a risk of really it if they bring the virus of of causing a major problem. So, but I think they've, I think it's gotten to a point now where it's not going to get much better at this point. I think they got a handle on it. I think people have an idea. And now um, she's done it gradually because people can travel to where like Mike is, but they can't stay at the parks. The parks is another step, but she doesn't have the parks open, oh, the governor, okay. until the end of June. So that's a long time. And so once that hits, 
then the summer is officially rolling with people traveling back and forth. But the, it's all going to take so long to come back economically. Have they, have they said anything about, like, the white caps? Are they going to be just done? Or, like, how does that work? They have not said. And I think it's all wait and see, holding pattern, um, until, until they can get more information. I, you know what? I, 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 I tend to think that they will play some baseball this year. I really do. Yeah. I, That'd be uh, good. Bunch of double headers. Get it in. Hey, where you guys are at, do, how, what percentage of people do you, when you go out to the store or whatnot, wear masks? Uh, I've been in the store a couple times. I've, like, I see a couple people. Not many, though. Like, uh, counts hasn't really been hit. We've had, like, maybe three or four cases. So, I think everyone's, um, you know, pretty nonchalant about it. Like, they realize it's happening, but uh, it's not, I need to, you know, wear mask and gown type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think ours has uh, been a little bit similar. I, a little more masks in a sense of uh, we have a lot of nurses that go over to Detroit every day. So we have a lot of in Ontario, or sorry, in Windsor in our area. And majority of our cases have been nursing home or the nurses, essential workers going back and forth. So mm-hmm. um, that's kind of what's brought it in, mm-hmm. in a sense. I know, I know they're essential and doing a great job with something like that, but um, so I think we just wear masks, more people wear masks here to try not to get those nurses and other people sick, not really for their own kind of sake type of thing. And I bet you, I bet you when uh, the season comes back in, in Van Andel that the season ticket holders will be spread out. And I think the remainder of the tickets will be given to um, first responders. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good that's idea. A really yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you they will do that. It, Matt, this just popped into my into my head. Did, you got you had a bad injury this year, didn't you? To your to your to your chompers, right? Yeah, it healed up pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kept his how, teeth too. You it, did, did? Did they put them all back in and sew it up? Yeah, they took them all back in, and um, these are all my real teeth. Um, and uh, I'm gonna have to get a little more work done when the dentists open up, but. Um, yeah, I think it was 22 stitches I had through there and this kind of bone here was broken. And that's, and that, and that's where it broke the upper, uh, that, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. So what I was that? Wire, I, I got a wire off in, in April there. Oh, that's a, that's a painful thing. How many games did you play with a busted jaw? Um, you, you actually didn't play with a busted jaw, right? You missed a couple, didn't you? Yeah, I missed, I missed, uh, I think three games. But I don't know how many I end up playing. I, I would have had the full face mask on probably yeah, until the, uh, the May first. Yeah. I don't I understand you guys. I don't understand why you don't. I mean, you can have your face, your beautiful faces, uninjured with this deal, but you're you're you you won't do it. And I don't know why. What is that? That thing, that thing <laughs> probably would have been teeth. good for Look the, at these that would have been teeth. teeth. Yeah, yeah. He's he's got the worst. But I think the. The visor probably would have kept me from the coronavirus spread, probably. Uh, <laughs> you know what's I'll... funny, too? Uh, back when, I think it was my first year, Eric was on the radio. He, he did, I did a phone interview with him, and <laughs> I wasn't wearing my teeth. And I'm, I'm going through, like, the second question, and he stu- he's like, oh, no, 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 no. I got to interrupt. Are you wearing your teeth? And I'm like... <laughs> Not only are you a radio personality, he was an investigative, yeah. investigative well, journalist. I, I could hear it. He sounded like he was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Zayner, Zayner, one thing you want to know about Joe is when he doesn't have his teeth in, that means he's drinking wine so he can't stay in the false teeth. <laughs> Holy shit. You wine know what I, coffee. I can't drink <laughs> Do you re- – hell. So uh, you realize I, he's never got his teeth in after five. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, his teeth are – how come they're in right now? Uh, seriously. Uh, it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm there at 6.40. I mean, it's hey, good. So, uh, okay, you get, mom's good. Dad's good for both you guys. Everybody's doing their thing. Healthy, happy. I'm glad yep, to hear. Yeah, we're good. Yep. How's your family good? Everyone's yeah, safe man. and healthy. Yep. Mike, so you guys are all good, too? Every, everything's going well. Yep. Yeah, well, I tell you what, you guys, I'm so uh, thankful that you Question could do this. Zayner. Yeah, Zayner. please, 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 please. <laughs> Joe and I don't call you Papa, so I don't know what kind of shirt you're wearing. Yeah. Because well, I know uh, that's false. That's false advertisement. Uh, but we'll well, let yeah, it slide. you gotta start. You gotta start calling me Papa now, <laughs> which just sounds weird. Papa, yeah. <laughs> People will be like, "Oh, what's going on yeah. there? <laughs> you're calling him Daddy." <laughs> 
<laughs> no, this is for my grandkids. I got a seven-year-old. My, my grandson's turning seven years old today, and I can't seven. see him. I'm so wow. bummed out. So. I got my grandson right here. What's that? What's that, Matt? I, or, uh, I'm sorry, Mike? I got my grandson right here. Oh, look at this. Oh, there oh. he is. He's got his, look hey, at his hey, gear. Hey. <laughs> not, not. Look at that. Yeah, Who's, he's been playing hockey since he's four, and it killed him to see the season end. Who's his favorite player? Uh, that would be Turner Ellison. All right. All Ooh. right. Hard, All hard right. worker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I hope this doesn't uh, let the cat out of the bag, but Mike has a gift for, who, for Ford and who else? Chris Terry. Ford and Terry, very special gift that he's been trying to give these guys. And when we would meet up, uh, outside of the rink after practice, and we were all set to give it to him, to them, and then all all hell broke loose. So so Mike is like, should should, should I mail it? I go, no no no, don't mail it because we're gonna be back, and uh, and th there's a chance we can we can make it happen. So God willing, sounds good. Fingers crossed. God willing, yes, yep. You all guys right. have, are you guys uh, you're not coming back to Michigan till next season. Oh, the borders are actually closed right now. We can't go to the yeah. states right now. Oh, okay. oh yeah, that's right. I, I'm not entirely sure when I'll be back. I'll, I'll probably be back before training camp would open at some point. I was thinking August or something. I'll come up with pumps or something. <laughs> there you go. You know, who knows where I'll be, Joe? Who knows where I'll be? I don't, even, I don't have a deal. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'm I meet you at the Bradley Bar. Meet him at the Bitely exactly. Bar, uh, yeah, and yeah. and I I hope and pray that 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 goes the way we we hope it does, Matt. Because then we can do this. Well, hell, we can do it either way, whether or not whether you're playing in Montreal or you're playing here. But at the end of the day, you guys are our favorites, and we're we're so grateful that you're able to join us. So sounds good, guys. Thanks for having well, us. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Wrap it Thanks. up. Thanks. Be safe, and I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you all a little later. Okay. Stay all right. See you later. Good. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank see you. Guys. Get, see you guys. Yep. Bye bye. See ya.